Okay, let's talk about this problem. So, like in the previous problem, we was working for um, the component four, okay? But in this problem, your vector r is not written in component form, but uh, like the length of vector, the angle from the x pos I mean positive x-axis is given, right? So we would love to uh, write this vector as a component four, okay? That's really important technique, okay? So now let me give you the idea about this, okay? So on this side, I have vector, okay? And let's say this is vector x, okay? Then I know the length, okay? But let's say the length is, as we talked about it, the absolute value notation means the length, okay? And let me give you the angle from positive axis, which is theta, okay? Like for this problem, we're gonna use the trigonometry technique, okay? So, like arrays based on right triangle, okay? Look at this guy, okay? It is adjacent of your angle theta, okay? Do you remember like, you know, the one trigger function which is concerned with adjacent, which is the cosine. Because we know the length of vector, which is hypotenuse, and we would like talk about adjacent, okay? Which means it's concerned with cosine. So, okay, let me write cosine, okay? Since the cosine theta is equal to uh, uh, adjacent, like let's say this is x, over, um, the length hypotenuse, which is length of vector. But we would like to talk about this x, okay? Then we can multiply the length of vector. Then I can say your x component can be written by the length of vector times cosine angle, uh, like from the positive axis, okay? In the same manner, what about y component? Okay? So like that is opposite side of the angle, which is concerned with sine. Okay, so since the sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is the length of vector, and I'm going to do the same thing. Let me multiply the length of vector, which is absolute value of x on both sides. Then I can say your y component can be written by the length of vector times sine theta. Is that clear? Okay, so like I can give you this one as the formula. Okay, so here we go. Let me give you one note, okay? So if you know the length of, vector, length of vector and the angle from the positive x-axis, then your vector x can be written by the length of vector times cosine theta comma length of vector sine theta, which is like, you know, vector component four. Is it okay? So let me apply this one. In this problem number three, the length of vector is given by two. The angle is 210, okay? So let me give you the figure of this one. So like since the angle is two, 210, which is 190, 180, and 30 degree more, your vector R is here, okay? This is 210 degree, okay? This is your vector R. And we know the length of this guy is two. It is given in the problem, okay? Then how can you write this one? Your vector r is equal to, your x component is the length of r times cosine theta, comma, length of r sine theta. Okay, let me plug in everything. r is two and cosine 210 degree and two times sine of 210 degree, okay? So like, do you remember the, like, how we can calculate, how we can find the value of cosine 210? Well, that is equal to cosine values negative cosine with a reference angle, which is 30, okay? And then this guy, sine 210 is minus sine with reference angle, okay? And you should remember cosine 30 and sine 30, right? You have to know, okay? Cosine 30 is negative square root of three over two, and this is negative half. Is it okay? Then we can finalize this problem, okay? There we go. So your vector r can be written in a component form, which is um, two times negative square root of three over two, comma, two times negative 
one half. So which is equal to negative square root of three comma negative one. That's it. So this technique is really important for um, like physics and engineering problem. Okay, so you have to practice this a lot. Okay.